All right, welcome to Dele Mass Concepts. And in this segment, we're looking at the final question on CXC January uh, Mathematics Paper 3. This is question two, and it reads as follows. It says, um, Layla cycles along a path for five minutes. She starts from rest and accelerates um, at a constant rate until she reached a speed of five meters per second after a hundred seconds. Um, she continues cycling at five meters per second for two minutes and 40 seconds, right? She then decelerates at a constant rate until she stops. On the grid below, draw a speed time graph to show Layla's journey. All right, let's draw a speed time graph. So right now, um, what we want to look at is, so with this speed time graph here, so we have to pick up the information. So the first thing that we saw was that Leela cycled um, for five minutes. So you could see that they put this in seconds. Five minutes is about 300 seconds. And we're looking at that down there, right? So we got that five minutes, right? Now, let's put on her journey. She starts from rest. And when you start from rest, when you start from rest, you're starting from zero, right? So you're starting at zero, and she's going to cycle until she reaches five meters per second after 100 seconds. So, so basically, what we're going to do is just to take out our thing here. Allow me to mark this journey for us. So we're going from rest where zero is. And we're going to bring this up to five, but we want to make sure that it is at 100. All right. So I'm putting this journey in red. There it is. Right. All right. And then now, the next part of the journey says that she continues the cycling at five meters per second for two minutes and 40 seconds. Let us work out that. Two minutes and 40 seconds. So we want to know two minutes is 60 seconds times two so that's 120 seconds and 40 more seconds on that that's 160 remember now we are already at 100 seconds and we're going to be adding 160 more so we'll have to take this to 260 seconds because the time really matters again 60 seconds make a minute so we travel for two minutes that's two times 60 that's 120 seconds plus 40 more seconds on it because it's two minutes and 40 seconds. So that's 160 seconds. Add that to the 100. We have 260. So we're going to be moving and we're going to start this at 260. Let's say 60. From here to here. There it is. 260. All right. And then now it did say that she decelerates and then she stops. So we're going to come to rest. So picking up from right here and we're coming right down at 300 there, right there. She stops. And there it is. There it is. All right. So that is the journey that we, we plotted. That's the journey that we want, right? So that is Leela's journey being plotted there. It would have collected some marks. So what we have to do is to ensure um let me just fix this right yes better right so that's it right there so what we want to do is just to make sure that we follow read put the things in the right context and pick off the spots that you know we got right there right very good and if if so basically that's her journey so the first question now says that determining leela's acceleration now she accelerated all right, so let us look on her acceleration. Leela's acceleration would have taken place between here because acceleration is changing velocity over time. So they are changing speed over time. So she would have accelerated between this segment right here. So you could see that. That's acceleration that we have right there, going up there. So she was accelerating there. So what are the numbers that we're picking up? We're picking up from zero to five. And you're moving from 0 to 100. Again, from 0 to 5 and from 0 to 100 on the second line. So acceleration, let us see. 
we're going to put together now. Um, so the question says, determining um, Leela's acceleration. And the acceleration there is actually the gradient that you're looking at. All right. So we're talking about change in speed over time. Change in speed over time are changing time, basically. So we're talking about um, 5 minus 0, my 100 minus 0, right? So this is it. So we're looking at 5 over 100. And 5 over 100 can be seen as 0 0.05 meters per second square. All right? Right, so we want to make sure that we're not making any errors as we go along. 0 0.05 meters per second square. That is the acceleration that we she would have had. Now, the next question says, um, calculate Leela's average speed, right? Average speed. Average speed. Average speed is a concept, right? Average speed... Average speed is seen as your total distance over your total time. So your total distance over the total time that you traveled. So we know the total time already. We know the total time. It's going to be 300 seconds. But what we want now is the distance where the distance of a the distance of a velocity or a speed against time can be calculated by the area under the curve scene. So we're going to be focusing on the area under this curve scene. So, so when we're talking about the area under the curve, we're talking about what shape are we seeing, right? What shape are you seeing? Let us take a look. We are seeing a trapezium shape. If I can find the area of this trapezium, the area of this trapezium is equivalent to the distance traveled, right? So let us work out the distance traveled right here by looking at it right there. So the numbers that we're picking up here, this um, from this point to this point, it was 160. We have 300 down here for this, and the height is 5, right? So basically, what we're going to be working out now is the distance traveled is equivalent to the area right so it is it's equivalent to the area under the curve so what is the area under this curve that we have here we're talking about having a trapezium and the area of a trapezium is equal to half the sum of the parallel sides times the height. Half the sum of the parallel side, 160 plus 300. And you multiply that by the height, which is 5. So that formula will take us out. We could take our time and work it out. The sum of the parallel side, 160 plus 300 is going to give us 460. So I need a half of 460 times 5. So 460 divided by 2, 230, multiply by 5. 1,150, all right, meters. That is my total distance, 1,150. So let's go with that now. So we're talking about using that 1,150 meters, and then we're linking it to 300 seconds. So let us know, sort out that. So 1,150 meters divided by 300. And then we're actually getting an average speed of 3.83 meters per second, right? So the average speed was 3.83 meters per second. Part B. 
The diagram below shows the graph uh, of three lines, L1, L2, L3. The shaded region R, which represents the common region for the three inequalities associated with the lines L1, L2, and L3, is defined as R. We're seeing that, all right? No problem. All right, so we're looking at that nice diagram there. So this is what the question says. The table below shows some of the equations of the line L1, L2, and L3 and the respective inequalities that define the shaded region, all right? Looking at the lines and the, and, the, and the inequalities and the shaded region. So we're supposed to fill out the missing spots. Now, we can know the inequality by observing the lines, all right? So the line Y, so L, L1 is the line Y equal to 2X. So L1 is this line right there. L1 is right there. Good. So the inequality for that is to observe whether or not the shading is above that line or beneath the line. It's a slant line. Above would have been going that way, right? But beneath is going to be in blue coming this way, right? So you could see that, yes, it's shaded beneath the line. So then because it is shaded beneath the line, the inequality would be a less than, and I'm reading from where y is. Y is less than, okay, or equal to 2x, right? So that is one of our response right there. Y is less than or equal to 2x right there. Let us know. Let us know. Jump onto the next one, right? Let's jump onto the next question right there. All right. We want to look at. Um, this other question down here, L2. So L2 is the line y equal 2, right? So let's let's mark that line y equal 2. It is this line. Y equal 2 is that line, L2, right? So y equal 2 is that line right there. Now, again, it is, a, it is an horizontal line. When you have a horizontal line, you can look to see when you're greater than it, you shade above. But if you're less than it, definitely you're going to be shaded below, right? Now, when you look at this question, the shading was above the line. You could see above, above, which means that this one is a greater than or equal. I remember we have all solid lines that Y is going to be greater than or equal to 2 because we shaded above that line. Now, for this one, we actually definitely are seeing where we're not looking at the, 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 the diagram anymore, but definitely are seeing that we have this, right? So one of the things you could do is to quickly put it in the format that they want first. For example, we're talking about um, 2y um, is equal to 10 minus x. So if you divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. I'm trying to get y to be by itself. So y is equal to 5 minus, this would be half x or x over 2, all right? So if you want to put it in the exact format that they have, we're talking about having it where I'm going to put the x part in front. So y is going to equal to half x with a plus 5, all right? So I'm organizing it to set it up the way in which they had asked me to set it up like that. So I'm going to represent it like this. So let us put it like that. So y is now equal to negative half x plus 5. They wanted it in the format y equal to mx plus c. Then we give it like this. So we work the questions in the context. And this is it. Thank you for watching Delhi Maths Concepts here. And definitely definitely look out for more videos coming out all right if you have not yet subscribed to this channel please do so because there are a lot of questions coming out and we're preparing it ourselves for the exam coming see you next time Bye bye